What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live stream from Scalar Learning. And today we are continuing with our Khan Academy SAT math problem solving quadratic and exponential word problems. So hope you guys are having a with great December. We're getting ready for that break. I know the school that I teach at, we went on break officially today, which is amazing for students and teachers alike. But I know you guys are still prepping for that upcoming SAT in March. So without further ado, let's do it. And if you're new to the channel, of course, I'm solving these problems for the first time. I'm not prepping. I'm, I'm trying to do them in real time so you get the full experience of what it's like problem solving on the fly, just like you would do if you're taking the test yourself. Here we go. Dahlia tosses a ball to Kaylee. The ball travels along a path of a parabola. So it's going to go like this and reaches a maximum height of 10 feet. So here's my vertex of 10 feet. We don't know what this is. After traveling a horizontal distance of 5 feet. Oh, okay. So here's the coordinate. So the they're saying that the horizontal distance is represented by x. And the this is the height. So there's my coordinate of the vertex. If Dahlia releases the ball at an initial height of three, which of the following, three feet, which of the following function models the path of the ball? Um, so I assume here's my x-axis. I mean, sorry, my y-axis. Here's my x-axis. This is three, right? Not that you need to draw this, but just to give you an idea. And, and vertex, okay, so here's vertex form, right? It's y equals a, whatever that is, times x minus h squared plus k, where these are the values of the vertex. Uh, it's positive h when it's minus, it's whatever that h value is, and then whatever this k value is here. So it makes sense that it would be x minus 5 squared plus 10, because this is the y value of the vertex, the x value of the vertex. It's just that 3 doesn't make sense. Um, well, So let's, let's look at the rest of the answers, because we need to basically, when we plug in 0 for x, we should be getting... 3 for, for the outcome of the function. And that doesn't happen here. Uh, this one wouldn't work either. You see all of these, the vertex is right in this, so that doesn't help differentiate. It's probably going to be D, but let's test it out here. Okay. There, okay, the reason why I say D is because the rest of the, the A and B are going to have positive. This thing is going to be positive because there's a positive value, something squared. So we're going to add to 10, and that means my y-intercept value is going to be way bigger than 3. It's going to be over 10 plus whatever this value is. These two are negative, so these make sense. This one looks like it's going to subtract too much because if we plug in 0, it's going to be negative 5 squared, which is 25 times negative 3, which is negative 75. So we're going to get a massive negative number. That doesn't make sense. So let's test it out with D, even though I'm 99% sure it's right. But we'll just do it anyways. So it's negative 7 25ths times 0 minus 5 squared plus 10. 0 minus 5 is, of course, just negative 5. So negative 5 squared is 25 times negative 7 25ths. These guys cancel out, and it's negative 7 plus 10 which equals three, and that's what we wanted. So D will give us everything we need plus that initial value of three, or initial height. Next, Tanya hits a golf ball from an initial height of 10 feet, okay? Again, it's gonna be another parabola starting at 10. The height of the ball h and feet above the sea level t seconds after. So now this is time down here, or seconds. Can be modeled by a quadratic function. If the golf ball reaches a maximum height of 74 feet exactly two seconds after it's been struck. There's the max, and then it's coming down. And whatever, this isn't drawn to scale, but this is 74. So again, we've got 2 seconds, 74, there's my vertex. 
which of the following functions best models the height of the ball? So again, we already know based on vertex normal form, it's going to be y equals some value times x minus 2, okay, squared plus 74. Vertex normal form, it's a vertex form for a quadratic is very important. Again, vertex, vertex there. And I get, I bet again, oh, sorry, it'll be t, not x. y is the same thing as h in this case, h of t, interchangeable. And yeah, so, okay, so b and d are out because this is an, it's supposed to be minus two. This would indicate at negative two seconds, it would be seven, uh, high to 74. So let's just eliminate those really quickly. So B and D are out. Already, if you're running low on time, you have a 50-50 chance between choosing A or C. Again, I already know it's C because this value is negative. This is positive. This will become way high, higher than 74 for the initial value when T equals zero. But now let's prove it just to show you. Uh, if I plug in, so I'm plugging in zero for T equals negative 16 times zero minus two is negative two squared plus 74. Okay, so negative two squared is four, and then four times negative 16 is negative 64 plus 74 equals 10, and that's what we wanted, our initial height of 10. Okay, next question. The present value PV, now we're talking about not quadratics, now we're talking about exponential equations. The present value of an investment is the amount that should be invested today at a specified interest rate in order to earn a certain amount of at a future date. The amount desired is called future value. Okay. Got it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I, I get, I, it doesn't even matter really that it's talking about money or present value, future value. I just wanted to understand it because I remember I've learned this, uh, of course in math. So the amount desired is called the future value. For a future value of 10,000, which of the following functions models the present value PV to be invested in a savings account earning 5% compounded annually for T years? Hold on. So let me just make sure this makes sense. Uh, for a future value of 10,000, thousand I, I don't think this may I don't think this first one makes sense hold on the present value of an investment is the amount that should be invested today at a to earn a certain amount at a future date the amount desired is called the future value for a future value of ten thousand yeah I think this is wrong this is backwards we, it's like this should equal 10,000 equals blank or X, whatever, times this whole thing. Um, oh, wait a minute. This is the only one that makes sense. Because this is a 5% five, 5 interest rate. Like this, this actually works. I was just misunderstanding, I think, the, the phrasing. I thought it should be the other way. Let me think about it. Got it. Okay. All right. Uh, the wording is still throwing me off. It's got to be A. But basically what they're talking about is like, like at one year, you're going to earn 5% interest. And which means if you plugged in one, you're going to get 10,500. If you plug in two, you're going to get not 10, you're not going to get 11,000. You're going to get 11,000, like 100, a little bit more because you're then taking the second year, you're taking 5% of that full amount of the full 10,500, not 10,000. So you're not adding 500 this time. You're adding 500 and some change, I think like $525. So anyways, that's got to be it. The These ones don't make sense because this is like the interest rate is going up. This is decreasing. So it's got to be this. Oh, no. It's this one. Shoot, yeah, that was, seemed like I was kind of confused. Okay, let's let's make sure. Present value should be less than 10,000, not greater. So I did get it backwards. Okay, so here's how I think it's, here's why, so let's go with my original inclination, the reason why I was confused. So I was thinking it was like present value. So it's like future value equals present value. 
and the future value is ten thousand. So this is what this is what I was originally looking for, but it, it wasn't there. So let's see if I do it if I do it like this and if I derive it, it makes sense. One point zero five to the t. Like this would be the the equation that I was looking for. And then the isolated present value. Yeah, that's what it is. And then so so I should I should have thought that through a little bit more. Then you divide by one point zero five to the t by both sides, right? And then this goes away, and then it is present value equals 10,001.05. This is the same thing as t to the, uh, to the negative t, because it's in the denominator to the negative t. Darn it, I knew that, should have thought about it more carefully. But I kind of jumped to a conclusion there and assumed that this, I don't know, I don't know. I just, I, I felt like this setup didn't make sense, but I, but then I just assume I must be interpreting it incorrectly. And yeah, so see here's their setup, same thing. See here's present value, not in the other spot. Okay, well I hope that was educational because I think I learned the most from mistakes, hope you guys do too. And that's why I do them fresh like that because I think that's a valuable experience for all you guys to watch me sometimes uh, make some mistakes. All right, Thomas tosses a ball upward into the air from an initial height of 1.475. <clears throat> the height of the ball above the ground, h in meters, t seconds after the ball is tossed can be modeled by a quadratic. Function reaches its maximum at 12.5, oops, at 1.5 seconds, 12.5 meters. Exactly, one point, approximately how long will the ball be in the air? All right. So we're going to, and this is a calculator section, so we're going to actually have to create a quadratic. So let's see. Y equals A times X minus 1.5 squared plus 12.5. And then if I plug in, I can solve for that A value by plugging in 0 for X and solve for y. So it's a times one point, this would be 1.5 squared, which is 2.25 plus 12.5 mm, equals, oh, sorry, I know the y value, the y is 1.475. Okay, then we subtract 12.5, subtract 12.5. Let me do it, use a calculator. Oops, not calculator.com. All right, so it is 1.475 minus 12.5 equals negative 11.025 divided by 2.25. Divided by 2.25 equals that. So A is negative 4.9. Negative 4.9 equals Y. <clears throat> All right, now we have our function. And then it says, how long will the ball be in air? We need to find a zero, essentially. So we need to now set this equal to zero and solves, kind of complicated, but it's okay. So then that's negative 12.5 equals negative 4.9 times x minus 1.5 squared. Divide by negative 4.9. And we've got 12.5, 4.9. equals x minus 1.5 squared. We're gonna take the square root of both sides. Square root of second answer equals 1.597. 1.597 seconds equals x minus 1.5, and then we're gonna subtract 1.5, or sorry, add 1.5, excuse me. Add 1.5, add 1.5. So it looks like it's about 
seconds. Let's see if that's there. Should be this. All right, cool. Next and final question. All right. Wang Lei would like to build a 144 rectangular square foot rectangular garden. So as soon as I see the word rectangle, I'm drawing a rectangle. He plans to enclose this area with exactly 50 feet of fencing. So if this is x, this is y. We know that 2x plus 2y, that's the perimeter, should equal 50. And we also know that x times y equals 144. I'm just, I don't even know if we need to do this. This is just where my mind's going. I'm creating a system of equations. It will be used to find the width x of Wang Lei's garden. Let's see the width. So uh, I could do it like this. I could say that we could do a little substitution here. Okay. So I know that 2x, two, actually, let's divide everything by 2. This becomes x plus y equals 25. And I know that y equals 25 minus x, subtract both sides by x. And then this, actually, this chunk here, I can substitute it in for this guy. And I know that x times, oops, x times 25 minus x equals 144. And there's my equation. x times 25 minus x equals 144. That's it. Should be it. All right. Cool. So that is it for today's live stream. Just going to see if we have any questions. Wouldn't it just be, wouldn't it just be three? Because 1.5 is halfway. Oh, all right. So that's a bit of an oversimplification. You're going back to that exponential, to that parabola question. We don't know. Okay. And remember, I would say you'd be, you would be correct if that 1.5 was the exact center, for example, if it was starting at the origin and then hitting the, the max at 1.5 seconds, so here's the origin, boom, then it would be symmetric and you'd be correct, right? But it wasn't. It would, remember, it had an initial height, so that slightly changes, that slightly changes things. And it, it, it won't be, it's still symmetric, but now it's, it's almost like it's been shifted to shifted a bit and it's a little bit off. Oh, actually, I think it would be, in this case, it was like a little bit more like that. Anyways, all right. Thank you guys so much for joining. Hope you found that helpful. Again, if you want more content for the SAT preparation from Scalar Learning, make sure to click that subscribe button. And if you found this video helpful, please click the like button. Super helpful. Every a bit, bit of more likes that I get helps the channel immensely uh, in terms of growth. Thank you guys so much. Have an awesome break. If I don't see you before the break, have a happy new year. Well, I'll probably see you next week, but if I don't or if you're not able to log on, have an amazing new year, and I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.